This is part 21 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss bindings in WCF. Before we understand what bindings are, first let's try and understand what a WCF service endpoint is. To understand a WCF service endpoint, let's look at an example. So here, I have a simple hello service. First of all, let's look at the service contract itself. The service contract name is I hello service and it is present within hello service namespace and this service contract has got one operation contract that is get message and this service contract is implemented by this hello service class so this hello service class again this is present in that same namespace and if you look at the implementation of this get message method it's straightforward all we are doing is concatenating the name that gets passed into this method with this word hello and then we are returning that string back okay so a simple hello service and this hello service is present in a class library project and to host this hello service we are making use of a console application okay and if you look at the configuration within this the host project look at this we are making this service available hello service which is present in hello service namespace and look at the service has got an endpoint so what is an endpoint an endpoint is where the service is available for the clients of the service to consume and a WCF end, uh, service endpoint consists of three things the address the binding and the contract these are sometimes called as a B C of a service endpoint so what is the address going to tell to the client the address is going to tell to the client where is the WCF service available so the complete address of the service and if you look at the address here we are simply saying hello service so what is this address you know this is not the full address this is just the relative address and if you look at this host section here we have got base addresses element and within the base address you know notice that here we have net.tcp colon four slash four slash localhost colon 1890 so this is the base address and then the service address is hello service so the fully qualified address where the service is available is net.tcp colon four slash four slash localhost colon 1890 forward slash hello service okay so the address of an endpoint is going to tell to the client where is our service available binding we'll be talking about that in detail in just a bit and then contract the contract is going to tell to the client what operations are available for that client to consume okay so basically this service endpoint implements you know this contract i hello service and if you look at i hello service it has got one operation contract get message so this is the method that will be available for the clients to invoke at that service endpoint okay so we have got an endpoint at the wcf service side okay and then if you look at this you know there's another base address HTTP colon localhost colon 8080 so what is this base address for this base address is basically uh, for the clients to generate uh, proxy classes using uh, the metadata so basically again here look at this we have a behavior section we are making you know the metadata available over HTTP okay so that the clients can use that metadata to generate the proxy classes okay but then the basic thing that we have to understand here is a service endpoint contains three things that is the address binding and the contract okay now for the clients to consume you know this service they have to use you know a similar endpoint otherwise they wouldn't be able to communicate with our service okay and to speed things up I have already created a client for the service so basically the client looks like this and then all I have done is added a reference to the hello service and then when we click this button you know we are creating an instance of the hello service client and invoking that get message passing to that method whatever the user has typed into the text box okay so let's go ahead and run this so let's say for example we enter this word Prajim and click get message so we get that message back hello Prajim okay so we are invoking the service alright 
Now, if you look at the application configuration file of this client, notice that this client now, notice that we have a client section here within the application configuration file. By the way, how did I get this configuration file? When we have added a reference to the service, you know, it has automatically generated this configuration for us. Okay, so within this configuration file, we have the client section and then we have this endpoint here. Okay, and again, look at this. This endpoint has got an address, binding, and a contract. Okay, now there are other things here as well, but then we can safely get rid of them. So let's go ahead and get rid of this binding. Uh, configuration. And if you look at this binding configuration, it says net TCP binding I hello service. So where is that binding configuration coming from? You know, from right here, net TCP binding underscore I hello service. So this is the name of that binding and we are referencing that name right here. Okay. Now you may be wondering why did we get so much of the configuration? We didn't specify all this configuration for net TCP binding within the WCF service. So if you look at the service endpoint here, the binding that we have specified is simply net TCP binding. And we are telling you know the clients to be using all the defaults of net TCP binding. Now if you look at the client itself, you know there are several attributes here. What is the open timeout, receive timeout, send timeout, what transaction protocol to use, okay? And what is the max received message size? So there are several attributes here. And all of them here, basically, they are set to defaults, okay? So as they are the defaults, you know, we, we, we didn't really customize anything within the service as far as this nest TCP binding is concerned. So we will, uh, we are saying, you know, we want to use the defaults, but then when we added a reference to that service within the client application, it has automatically uh, provided all the values, you know, default values basically for these attributes. Okay, since they are defaults, we can safely get rid of this section altogether. So we can get rid of this bindings section. And we can also get rid of this binding configuration and the name as well. So now, if you look at what we have in this identity as well, if you look at the endpoint here, it is very much similar to what we have in, in the service. Look at this. This is the address. Now here we have the full address. Okay. So net.tcp colon for slash for slash localhost 8090 for slash hello service. That's where the service is available. So if you look at the service address here, it's hello service and the base address is this one. So that, that it's the same address that the client is using to communicate with the WCF service. And then look at the binding net TCP binding and within the WCF service, the binding is again net TCP binding and the contract is I hello service. Similarly, within the WCF service, the contract is I hello service within hello service namespace. Okay. Now the client is going to communicate with with an endpoint that looks like this at the service end. Okay. So now let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work. Let's close this application that's running. Let's pass this regime. Look at that, it still works. Okay, so basically a service endpoint consists of three things that is the address, binding, and the contract. So, what is a binding then? A WCF binding defines how the client needs to communicate with the service. The WCF binding that we choose determine these three things for the communication between the client and the WCF service. So basically when you have a client and a service and if you want them to communicate with each other, then we need to decide upon what protocol, I mean what transport protocol do we want to use for the communication between the client and the WCF service. Do you want to use HTTP, TCP, named pipes or MSMQ? And what message encoding? Now, when the message is being transmitted over the wire, so how do you want to transmit it? In what format? Do you want that to be in you know, plain text or XML so that it can be interoperable? Or do you want it in binary format for performance reasons? 
okay so what message encoding you want and what protocols you want for example do you want reliable messaging support do you want transaction support okay so a binding in WCF basically dictates these three things for example if you choose basic HTTP binding the transport protocol will be HTTP and the message format will be uh, XML and you don't get reliable messaging and transaction support by default okay on the other hand if you choose net TCP binding the transport protocol is going to be TCP message encoding by default is going to be binary and you know again reliable messaging and transaction support you can customize them if required so basically the binding that you choose determines the underlying transport protocol the message encoding format and whether you want reliable messaging and transaction support okay so that's why binding is very important and in WCF there are several system provided bindings you know out of the box WCF has got several bindings available okay and that complete list can be found at this link so if you visit that link here look at this you can find all the bindings that are available we have basic HTTP binding WS HTTP binding you know different types of binding net TCP binding right so there are several bindings available now the next question that we have to ask is so there are different bindings available which bindings do I have to use now that depends on your application requirement you know basically what transport protocol you want uh, do you want you know your WCF service to be interoperable or do you want your WCF service to be you know performing uh, you is performance the most important criteria you know the client is also going to be .NET so in that case probably you would choose net TCP binding behind the firewall for because net TCP binding uses a proprietary binary format so the application is going to be a little faster okay so basically depending on your uh, application requirement you pick and choose the binding that you want now if you are not sure which binding to use then at this link there is a flowchart which can be very handy so let's actually visit that link and see that flowchart so this is that URL on the slide look at this here you have a WCF service and the client for that WCF service is it going to be WCF if it is not a WCF client then the next question that you would ask is it an MSMQ client and if the answer is yes then you would choose MSMQ integration binding so within this link so we have among these system provided bindings there should be MSMQ integration binding somewhere so this is the binding that I use if the client is MSMQ client okay if it's not an MSMQ client then the next question that we would ask is it a legacy ASMX web service client okay if the answer is yes then you would use basic HTTP binding if the answer is no then you would use WS HTTP binding okay so basically this flowchart can help you to pick and choose which binding you want and obviously here you can find a complete list of the binding where if that binding is interoperable what kind of security you get by default okay and you know sessions transaction support whether if it is duplex you know basically you have wealth of information about bindings at this link right here but the bottom line is a binding determines what transport protocol you want to use what message encoding format you want to use and what protocols like whether you want reliable messaging and transaction support etc now we know that there are several system provided bindings and uh, you know depending on your application requirements you pick and choose the binding that best suit your needs but for some reason if none of the system provided bindings suit your needs then WCF is very extensible in that case you can create your own binding and the application is going to work okay you just plug in that binding and then you can use it the same way as the system provided bindings now look at this here the WCF service says you know it is making the service available at this binding net TCP binding and the client also has equivalent configuration the binding is net TCP binding and this is the address where the service is available and this is the contract so now when we run it you know the client is working as expected so when we pass pregeam 
so it works now let's say we change you know binding from net tcp binding to basic http binding let's go ahead and run this and see what's going to happen so when i pass prajim we will get an exception and obviously you know there's no binding that's available at the service and obviously you know it doesn't support that protocol you know and that message format because the service has got just one service endpoint okay so this is that uh, service endpoint and if you want you know if you have another client who wants maybe text messages that is XML messages or HTTP protocol you can always add another endpoint and and specify the binding as basic HTTP binding so basically you can expose as many endpoints as you want all right that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.